Welcome to the Page of Our Lives podcast with your hosts, Paige Evanson and me, Leslie Stewart. Every week, we take a page from our own lives or the life of an inspiring friend and give you the Cliffs Notes. Our goal is to encourage you, challenge you, and remind you to have more fun. So grab your favorite drink, pop in your earbuds, and settle in. We promise it'll be a real page turner. Like almond milk is just another name for nut juice. This is another day in the page of our lives. Okay, I cannot believe we're both wearing hot pink. <laughs> Great minds think alike. Sorry to all of our friends that are actually listening to this podcast and not watching it, but you are missing out on like like true 1987 <laughs> fluorescent pink on both Paige and I today. So you even have cute blue glasses. I, I you know what these are. I'm gonna I'm gonna put them in the show show notes because every time I wear these, people are like those are the cutest glasses. So I'm at that age in my life where I don't need glasses all the time. I just need glasses to read, uh-huh. and um, I can't seem to keep a glasses uh, nearby me to save my life. So I went to Amazon about a year ago. This is during the pandemic, and I bought cheap glass read glasses readers. And they come in all the different strengths you need. And I got a pack of six glasses, six, okay, wow. for like $13. Oh my goodness. Yes. You've got to link those because I, I know some people who could use them. Yeah. They make great stocking stuffer, all that kind of what, I mean, what is it? It's April, May. We're talking about stocking stuffers, <laughs> hey. like whatever. But my whole point is I love them. They came in blue, white, pink, orange, which is not, uh, not my color. Um, but I okay. have them if uh, like an army green, um, uh, maybe I can't remember what the other color is. Um, anyway, they're adorable. They are my favorites. I also have like more fancy readers, peepers uh-huh. brand, which are very popular. Oprah, Oprah wears peepers. Um, I have a few of those. I don't like them nearly as much as my cheap $13 pack of six glasses. And I, now I have one in my office, in my book bag, in my purse, by my bedside table, by the TV, I have one in the kitchen. So I have them all over. And I, this is just to show that I have turned into my mother because when I was growing up, my mother would go to the beauty salon, uh, no, the beauty supply. And she would buy the half eyes, you know, the little half eye readers Yes, yes. and she would buy them in like the most wild, bizarre colors and colors. Patterns, and they would be everywhere in the house. But it was inevitable that she would be like, I can't find my glasses. So you see my glasses. So oh anyway, my gosh. I'm turning into Which, my mother. I wish I had, I don't think I have one of them right around here. I saw a TikTok last night where some lady's like, oh my gosh, it works. Okay. You know, the little um, command hooks that are white plastic command hooks. Like you okay. can peel off the sticky yeah. on the back and stick them on the wall. Yeah. Well, they took one of those and stuck it on their forehead. So that when you pull your glasses up, you can just, you can just sit it on the hook. Can you get a visual? It's so- like this. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Again, sorry for all of our yes. listeners, but I'm sure they have the visual. Yes. Yeah, so you get the little command sticky and she's she's like, you can get four for a dollar at the dollar tree. <laughs> and, you, and that way you don't have, like, I don't care if I get the creases in my hair but you can stick the command hook right on your forehead and then you just put your glasses right there and they just hook right on your head. I'm telling you right there. now. If okay, you wait, ever I find can... me with a command strip on my forehead, it's time for an intervention. <laughs> oh my goodness, it was so funny. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta find this. Another thing, really quick, speaking of glasses, I, I don't know why we're even talking about this, but this is actually summer related. Um, okay. There's two types of eyewear that glasses you need to look up. Gooders, Yep. G-O-O-D-R-S, We've talked about those Gooders. before. Yep. Talked okay. about, yes, um, Gooders sunglasses. They're amazing for running they don't, and swimming and all the things. But really, if you just need a good laugh, you need to go on the Gooders website and okay. look at all of the names that they have on their um, glasses. And then my husband has gotten into Blenders glasses. Blenders. Okay. Blend, so Gooders and Blenders. Um, okay. I don't know if the Blenders have as cool of names, but they do have really cool sunglasses. Okay. Um, well, they do show have notes, a few. Friends, like a few show notes, friends, show notes. Yeah, um, looks like uh, Natty McNasty is one of the names of the blenders. So they might have some good names, but Gooders has the best names for sunglasses and they're polarized okay. and they're cheap, like 25 bucks or oh, less. Oh, that's, yeah, I'm not an expensive 
sunglasses person. Obviously, if I'm buying a pack of six readers for $13, <laughs> I am not spending a lot of money on sunglasses either. I like to have, I, this is, I recently defined my husband's and my spending patterns in this way. We both spend money. He spends for quality and I spend for quantity. Oh, so yes. I am all about more for less. You yes. Know, what can I get for less? So, okay. Let, can I, can we talk about that really quick? Yeah. All right. So we live in a small town near Clemson university. And this time of year is the best time of year. If you need furniture, because all of the Clemson oh. students are moving out. And so they drop off everything at the local thrift stores. So we have like the dream center and the, um, you know, Goodwill, Goodwill Salvation yeah. Army, Boys Camp, thrift, you know, they're all the thrift stores. And so um, I've been able to find such, so many great deals um, at the thrift store. So I just went today and I got um, those memory foam mattress covers yeah. um, that are really, really thick. Well, these look like they were never even slept on, which they probably weren't. These kids were sleeping on food and futons. They get rid of futons like nobody's business. I've got so, some futons. So let me ask you this, because when I think about college students offloading furniture that they don't want anymore. I'm thinking yes. like it's got stains and smells and, you know, it's like stuff Bro. buried in the crevices. Like it does not sound like the kind of well, stuff I want. You are so brave that not only do you buy it, but you buy the mattresses. Like, <laughs> well, okay. So these are just the memory foam, like okay. the thick, thick memory foam and they yeah. have a zippered like waterproof casing around them. Okay. You know, All right. So I can, can wash that. that. And I can wash it. So I'm, okay. so that's why I was like, I was fine with that. And then um, this is kind of a cool God story. So I lead a D group, which is stands for discipleship group. Yes. And um, for those of you who you may not know me that well, just yet, which you guys are going to get to know if it's really well, I'm very like thrift. I'm very thrifty. You are. And I love finding stuff on the marketplace. And I've learned the longer you keep your That's hands. That's the Facebook marketplace the for Facebook those of you that don't know. Yes. Facebook marketplace. And so, and often if you need something, you just need to tell a few people. And because somebody knows somebody who knows somebody. That's so um, in my D group, it's all new women that I've never met before until this um, past six weeks. Like we're all newbies. We're just getting to know one another. And so they don't know that I'm this way, um, that I'm very, very thrifty and stuff. And so I've had two ladies in particular who had nothing. They just moved to the area and literally like they had their, their beds. One's a professor and the other one um, is actually, she's a, she became a student again. And I'm like, well, what do you need? I'm like, what do you mean? Do you need a couch? Do you need a chair? Do you need, she's like, yeah, literally like, I don't have anything. I have a bed wow. and that's it. Yeah. And so Anyways, I'm like, well, put it out there and look on the Facebook marketplace. Well, here we are only a week later from mentioning that. And the first girl, she's gotten a couch and a love seat and a dining room table from all these college kids that are like moving out. I love and it. And then um, the second lady, she was so nervous. She's from Madagascar, which I don't know if y'all have been ever to Madagascar. Like I've, I barely. It's in Africa. It. It's, a, it's an island off the coast of Africa. I do yes. know. I'm good at geography. Good job. It's Liz. also a movie. But that's yeah, that's all I can think about. of is the movie. So, anyways, <laughs> apparently she's like, I was so afraid to ask, but when you said the other girl got her stuff, I thought, well, maybe I should ask too. I'm like, yeah, girl, what do you need? And so she's like, I need a table and chairs. And she had never heard of the Facebook Marketplace. And so I'm like, let me introduce you. <laughs> but but my be, secret obsession. <laughs> yes, I'm like, please be careful because. <laughs> it can get a little addicting finding some good deals. But anyway, so yesterday I, we were able to go get her a table and a chair. So I guess my point in telling all of y'all that is number one, don't be afraid to be thrifty. Yes. And you got to just tell somebody what you need. That's right. Somebody out there is getting rid of it and, or wants to sell it at a discount. I love it. I love that. I love that we are very different in that way. And it's not that I'm above buying thrifty because I, I love thrifting for like, I love antiquing. I love thrift, actually like thrift clothing, um, mm -hmm. all of that. But sometimes with furniture, I just, it's not that I won't do it. I just don't have the energy. Sometimes it just, it, yeah. it seems it's just easier to like, let's just go to home goods and get that thing I need. Oh yeah. So, I mean, I'm still buying on the cheap. I'm not, there's no Ethan Allen, anything in my house, but you know, so, I wish <laughs> I'm not, I'm not at a place to afford model home furniture yet. But I have found that a lot of model homes are great at when they go to um, sell the home and they have a garage sale. See, there now that's go. whenever I find the model home furniture. 
Look um, at you. Which we furnished some of our house with, um, cause it's, I'm like, it's all been staged furniture. Nobody I love it. On it. Nobody so, sat on that. They just took pictures. Of it. They it. just took pictures of it <laughs> and then they had to sell it. Okay. I think we should get to our topic of the day. I know this has been a long but intro. This is, Sorry. I love how we started with hot pink shirts and then we ended up on thrift furniture. And now we're going to talk about what to do with your kids for the summer. Yes. And welcome to our show. Welcome. We're <laughs> glad you're here. This is the page of our lives. This I'm is the you. page of our lives, friends. And if, if you're along it. for the ride, boy, are we glad you're here. <laughs> so as we have been sharing, we are both mothers. I, Leslie, have two, almost one is almost a teenager. One is going to be 15 boys. And I am telling you right now, my entire motherhood career, <laughs> I have dreaded summertime because um. I just... I I'm not just like naturally, I'm not, a, I'm not, I wasn't, I did not go to school to be a kindergarten teacher. Okay. And I have said to so many people, so many times, like if I'd have known, if I'd have known from 1992 to 1996, when I was in college that I should have actually been studying early elementary education, I would have done it. But instead yeah. I became a journalist, which did me no good. Once I became <laughs> mom, <laughs> But see, I could tell them all, about an article I wrote or read one day, but it does not help me keep my children entertained in the summertime. So it's all coming full circle though, because now we're able to use those journalism skills to tell great stories. This is true. Although my son this week told me I, he started to say something and I, about, he had to build a diorama for his <laughs> history class. And I was like, Oh, can I tell you about the time I was in fourth grade and I had to build a diorama and he just immediately goes, no, 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 you cannot. <laughs> Like I really was wounded. It's okay. I can't tell my fourth grade diorama story. I'll save it for another no. podcast. But okay. today we want to talk about how do you keep these kids entertained? Paige has four children. That's yes. four. That's yes. four children. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. From yes. elementary to high school. We are yes. both often at our wits end, like a week into the summer break. So we yes. came today with our best ideas on what do we do with our kids during the summer, things that you can do with your kids during the summer so that you actually learn to enjoy the summer, survive the summer, and not just count down the days till school starts again. Right. Which right. I still will do. But yes. um, so I'm going to jump in because I actually okay. came prepared, which... <laughs> I came with, my I didn't get any makeup on today, but I have my list of ideas right. so good. today. So good. Okay. And so these are not in any particular age group, which would have been probably more effective if I was like, Oh, if your child is 10 and under try this. Um, I will say, I mean, thank God for Pinterest because when oh, my kids yes. were little, I would go out there little, I mean, like, you know, upper preschool aged. I would go out there and I would get all kinds of craft ideas. I remember, I remember one summer we did a whole series of crafts of stuff you do with band-aids and it was a big hit because, you know, kids That's go really at cool. young age, they go through that phase where they're like, I need a band-aid for, for everything. Right. And you go to the dollar tree and you buy all the cheap band-aids. Well, that's yes. what I found these crafts on, on making butterflies out of band-aids, making dinosaurs out of band-aids. And it was just construction paper and band-aids friends. So Google band-aid art crafts and your little toddler cool will probably to that. love that. Um, getting to put band-aids on pieces of paper. Um, but for me this summer, I am making a list of some things I want to do with the boys. Um, I'm feeling the fact that they are entering adulthood. They're getting closer yes. and closer every year. And I want to teach them to do some things that I think will better them in their life. Many of my kids are really, my kids are great. My kids are responsible. They make their bed, they make their lunch, et cetera. But there's some things they need some help to understand like, okay. um, laundry. Okay. They know how to bring it down. Right. And they know how to open the lid of the wash machine and dump it all in there. But kind of from that point till it gets folded is a big mystery. So we're going to work on how do you do laundry? Um, and specifically I notes. want to, I'm taking notes, Leslie, please do. And specifically, and here's the thing, like I, Paige, I, I have a feeling, do you make your own soap, laundry soap? I have. Okay. So I'm not that person. So see, we are a podcast that are for all types, the laundry yeah. soap making kind and yeah. me who buys the Tide Pods. I, I, I have not recently, <laughs> but I have. 
I buy the Tide Pods because I don't even want to have the mess of dumping the soap and all of business. So I buy the Tide Pods. It's easy to teach them. Take two Tide Pods, put them in first, dump your laundry and et cetera. So we're going to learn how to do our laundry, Mm -hmm. fold it, et cetera. And specifically, I want to teach my kids how to fold three specific things, t-shirts. Okay. So I'm looking for, I haven't figured out yet, creative ways to teach my kids to fold t-shirts. T-shirts are like hard to fold and not have them just be a giant wad. So t-shirts, do you roll, do you roll them? Or see, that's what them? I think we're going to learn. We're going to learn to roll our t-shirts because they have a that's, lot of them. And that's the Marie just, Kondo method. Yeah. I think I am going to have to go Marie Kondo on this. And then yeah. sheets. That's another one. They need to learn yeah. how to fold sheets. I can barely fold a fitted sheet myself. Like yes. they need to learn. They're going to be going to college. I mean, I know we got like four more years till this happens, yeah. but I'm, I'm ahead of the game. Yeah. And then towels. They need to learn how to fold towels. Like they know how to do shop, socks and shorts and all the other stuff. But those three things specifically, we're going to learn how to do. I also am going to teach them to cook some things. I'm going to teach them to, to specifically cook these things. Eggs. Did they don't scramble their own eggs. Now, Renner has scrambled his own eggs in the long ago past. But they, they, they don't do it consistently enough. Like I want them to a point where I could say, Hey, let's have eggs and bacon today. I'll do the bacon. You go do the eggs. Like we're not at that point. I would still have to stand there and be like, okay, never you know, mix them up and pour them in the, don't forget the Pam. Don't forget to put the stuff in the pan. So uh, eggs, <laughs> I want to teach my children how to make some kind of a dessert. See, this is all, this is what I'm oh, thinking. Yes. This is my whole purpose behind this because okay, when good. they get a woman in their life, Yes. I do not want her to be like, what kind of mother raised you? You don't know how to scramble an egg. You don't know how to fold a sheet. Like we're going to work on these things so that they're attractive, not just physically attractive. They are like like domestically attractive to women in the future. Right. You need to add scrubbing a toilet, scrubbing a toilet. Now they do the Lysol wipes because I'm not going to clean their, I mean, it's two boys that share a toilet. Like you can just imagine. I don't, they clean. Yeah. They Lysol wipe that thing for me. But, um, so uh, some kind of a dessert, a cake, cookies, brownies, something. They need to learn how to do this kind of stuff. Rice crispy treats. Rice crispy treats. That's another good one. And yeah. then the last thing is something with ground beef. I want to teach them how to grab, you know, take the ground beef, saute it in the yes. pan. I'm sure your kids know how to do all this stuff. My kids don't know how to do this. So like tacos or spaghetti sauce or something so that when they go away, they can feed themselves. They can impress their hopefully future yeah. girlfriends like hey look my mom didn't raise no fool i know how to do a few things in my life so and yes. then a- along that same line i want to teach renner i don't think camden will care because he doesn't eat this stuff anyway i want john to teach renner how to use the grill yes grill yes. a steak grill a chicken breast grill some hot dogs like yes. i'm telling you if he can go yes. to college in four years and know how to do all the stuff i just said you're winning my work is done yes <laughs> You're and love Jesus, like and we're done. Jesus. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Okay. Totally. What about you? So that that's like probably my top thing for this summer. If my kids listen to this podcast, they're going to totally hate all of those ideas, by the way. So I have to, you know, strategically drip this. You know what though? If you made it like a contest, they might be more apt this is true. If, boys Or if I pay them. <laughs> yes. If you pay them or or if you get another friend involved, like that's another, true. Oh, hey, friend. that's actually not a bad idea. I know. <gasps> Get a couple of the guys over and then the love other that. Are like, bring the meat. We're going to have a grilling session. All oh, right. You know, like- I love that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to get my mom friends and I'm going to say, you know what? You send your boys to my house this Thursday. Yep. It's cake making day. And we're yes. going to teach these boys how to bake a cake. <laughs> yes. To bring, you know what? You really should. I mean, we're recording this kind of close to Mother's Day. If we had thought of it ahead of time. You can have these boys over to come and make a cake for their mom or cookies or whatever. Listen, every day is Mother's Day if my kids will cook for themselves. So I'm well, fine with that. Well, and Father's Day is coming up. I mean, it That's is a true. matter. Fourth of July, Memorial Day, Labor Day. They got to learn to grill. They got to learn to grill and cook. Okay. Cool what about you? Cook. What's something you're going to do with your kids this summer? So I, <laughs> I feel like we're trying, we're totally just trying to finish the school year. Like yeah. we've only got a few more weeks of school left. So I feel like I'm trying to get that done. I'm thinking along the lines more of how to, um, of entrepreneurial type of stuff, mm. like how to get them to make money because, yes. um, these kids are not free and they're not, <laughs> <laughs> they're not paying for themselves yet, huh? And they're not paying for themselves and they're not, where is the ROI that everyone promised me? <laughs> I, I don't know, but I did. And I actually have it right here. So I've been making my, even my little girls go through this. I bought, um, I think it's, I think it was Dave Ramsey's, um, it was teen, if you, I know you can't see this if you're listening, but it's the teen 
entrepreneur toolbox. Wow. And there's an app. Um, it's a T it's, it, this is just like a packaging, but it's honestly really simple. And it's only, you could do it in eight days because it's oh. like eight lessons that are really short, like to how to get you, your kid thinking of things that they can do to make money. So for instance, like my 16 year old, the boy, um, yeah, I only have one boy. So one boy and three girls. And he, we, I got a really nice pressure washer. Mm. And so I'm like, you can offer pressure washing. Yes. You know, lawn, you know we don't have a lawnmower because we live kind of like in the woods. And so yeah. we don't really have grass. Um, but I'm like, you can use somebody else. You just be available. And we also have a trailer and he's got a Jeep and a, we have a truck. So I'm like, you can haul off people's junk. I'm like, yes. sometimes people just need somebody to come haul their stuff to the dump or whatever. Yep. So, uh, and he could, he can drive. So I'm thinking, cause I'm in that stage of elementary to high school. So I'm thinking th of things, um, more things that just say like the infant and toddler stage. Cause that's yes. just where I am right now. So infant, if you got infants and toddlers, I'm all about like going to the pool, going to the beach and taking naps yeah. like, <laughs> naps, <laughs> and watching Disney movies Yeah, Disney, <laughs> when it's too hot outside to do anything else. Exactly. Especially if you're like in Florida or the Southern States, it's, it's super hot. Yeah. Um, or Texas. It so, gets hot here. Or Texas. Yeah. And yeah. all we did whenever my kids were little is we swam in the pool all day. And that was like, that was good enough. And popsicles. And I even had those like fake, the fake blue pool, plastic pool. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Stick that in the driveway and get a big beach umbrella. And when you got little toddlers, like and babies, that was awesome. Um, so anyways, but I am thinking of jobs for my kids, um, for my, for all the ages. I got my kids, speaking of jobs, I got my kids a green light card. Have yes. you heard of that? Mm -hmm. It's green light debit card. I know there's probably a few options, but where we live, you have to be 13 to get a debit card. So my younger ones weren't old enough and they want to buy stuff. And I'm like, I don't, I never have, I don't have cash around with me a lot of times. So the green light debit card, I gave them a list of chores of like, say, feeding the dog. Yeah. And are all the dogs. We have three dogs. So, and doing the laundry that they, um, I actually took a dry erase Sharpie marker and I wrote on top of my dryer, what days of the week, who does their laundry so they can come to my laundry mat. I was like, oh, I like that. I'm sick of doing art for us. There's six of us in the household and it gets overwhelming to everyone. Yeah. Wait till Sunday and do everything. Yeah. yeah. So That's really I'm smart. Like, I gave each kid a day of the week, like mm -hmm. Lori, your day is Thursday. You can come to the laundry mat on Thursdays and do all your <laughs> do all your laundry did you put a quarter on top of the laundromat where she pays you to no do it? but i should i totally should. should i totally should do that okay listen that's a way to make some money at home mom <laughs> um so then uh, let's see so the laundry is getting them to actually fold it and put it away like yes. that's but i don't i do not fold my kids laundry i will separate if everybody's laundry is in the laundry room at the same time I will separate in piles. I'm like, Kate, Claire, Karis, Corey, mom, dad. And I just throw it in the piles. And then I'm like, come get your pile and take it to your room. Get it out of the laundry room. So that seems to help. Um, and then folding towels uh, is really great. And then I saw some hacks on folding sheets. You know how you should take a pillowcase and you stick all of your sheets inside the pillowcase and yes. fold that up to consolidate. Yes. So that's really good. Um, cleaning. So I have, I have a list of chores for my girls. If they want to get paid on their green light card at the end of the week, then every day they have to do like, um, the laundry, the dishes, uh, sweeping and mopping, um, wiping down the kitchen countertops and putting stuff away. I'm like, put your school stuff away, put the cereal away, put the milk, you know, just we're, we're learning to put things away. Um, now where we live. So every week I, I am paying the kids a little bit as yes. I'm like, I'm trying to think of what are jobs that I typically do and how can I work myself out of a job? And, <laughs> and then it's great. I'm like, Oh, I don't have to pay. I'm having to unload the dishwasher. No problem. I'll I take that money. I can transfer it right back into my account. Yes. Like you're not going to get paid for jobs that you don't do. And they're like, I'm sorry, mom. I'm sorry. I'll get to it. I'll get, to it. I'm like, yeah, come right now. And that way it takes the emotion out of it. Um, as well. I'm like, Oh, you're not doing it. I'm doing the job. I'll pay me. Yes. No we do a same system, the same system at our house. They get paid for the chores that they do picking up poop okay. in the yard, the, the dishwasher vacuuming, they do fold yeah. their laundry, but we got some work to do. Obviously yeah. I've talked about that, but, yeah. um, yeah, so we pay them to do those things. Renner mows the yard. He gets paid to do that. That's so good. yeah, That's I good. think it's good. I know it's, it's hard teaching these like life skills. Um, 
So as far as like fun stuff, we, since we live in South Carolina and there's lots of, we live right near Lake Kiwi and um, there's a lot of mountain streams, we'll probably go. I, I am really, like I said at the beginning of the episode, I'm pretty thrifty. So I try to find as many free things to sure. do as possible with my kids. So we swim a lot in the lake. Um, we'll go to either a neighborhood pool or a friend's, you know, a friend's pool. We will go um, swim in the mountain streams, that kind of stuff, which is free and fun to do. And and um, also, I want to have some more like like a fire pit, and, like hang out by the fire pit. Yeah. And do s'mores, um, things like things like that. I'm trying to think what other fun things. Um, I don't want to. I can sometimes lean towards we're gonna work, 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 work. But I'm like, oh, wait a second, we need to have fun. But thankfully, we would live in a place. We'll probably go paddleboarding a lot. Mm-hmm. We don't have a boat yet, so we'd like to get another boat so we could actually go tubing and skiing. But for right now, we'll use our we'll use our friends' boats. But we will paddleboard and kayak yeah. and swim and wear your sunscreen. Yes, mamas, please, and everyone. Your kids everyone wears sunscreen. And your good hunks. You know, another way your kids can make money, this was on my list, is have them clean out their old toys and games and have a yard sale. Yes. Or sell them on the Facebook marketplace. Or sell them on the marketplace. Yes, definitely. Or um, create them a little, I've thought about for my girls creating an Etsy shop. Mm -hmm. Um, And I know right now it's kind of big for kids to make um, crochet, like for girls, especially boys, but making crochet stuff or I have a cricket, so I'm like, you girls can make some stuff on the cricket and sell sticker, sell stickers. Yes. And let me tell you what else I got, Leslie. What did you get? For those of you who can see me, I'm a little extra golden today. <laughs> How do we know this? So I, li- <laughs> sorry, this is I'm just chuckling because you're gonna laugh when you hear this. So I got a spray tan machine. Okay. And let me tell you, it's like a pop up tent. And I got it from one of the college girls and I bought the chemical stuff, you know, the tanning solution and you put it in this, it's like a paint gun basically. And you stand in the tent and I spray everybody up and down. And let me tell you, I'm having the most fun with this. So I finally convinced my oldest girl to let me spray her. And she's like, she was like, I'm not doing that. No way. But sure enough, she like loves it. So last night I was doing spray tans. I even convinced my husband to get in the spray tan you machine. spray tanned clay yes i did <laughs> yes i totally did Love and it. it was hysterical he's he had a funny post on facebook he's like you can see it on my for fans only club <laughs> <laughs> his patreon club his no, patreon subscribers just to see his spray one. tan i don't know Woo. <laughs> no but um i always say tan fat's better than white fat so there oh, you go. hey if you can't tone it tan it that's what i always say <laughs> that could be your motto hey if you can't tone it tan it <laughs> i'm totally I can't laugh too that. hard because I, I got spray tanned this week myself but i didn't did do it i can't i didn't do it myself a friend. Did you go to the machine? No, I've done that. I don't like the machine. I always okay. feel like I'm going to turn out like Ross from Friends, where I forget to turn around and I get the big line down the side. But no, a, a friend. Um, so you know, I over one of my job responsibilities is to oversee mops at church, and um, one of the gals in the mops group has started a spray tan business, and she posted that she was like doing an introductory special, and I was like, oh, that sounds like my kind of speed. So. I had her come over and I had two friends come over and we popped up her tent in my garage and she spray tanned us. And, um, I gotta say like, Oh, isn't it fun? It feels good to have a little color. I don't care if it's fake. I don't care if I'm kind of Oompa Loompa ish. Like I, I'm, I'm happy to have a little color on my skin. Cause yeah, it looks good. It looks yeah. good. What do they charge for spray tans in Texas? So her price was $35 each to come to my house. Okay. If I had gone okay. to her, it was 30. Now I think she'll probably go up, um, as she gets more business, okay. but, oh goodness, that's like cheap. Normally it's at least $50 to get a spray tan. Um, yeah. whether that's someone, I that tell you, you I've or... had so much fun doing it. it. It's a little bit of an artwork to yeah. not spray too much on people, but, yes. um, it's really, we kind of started, which this speaking of jobs for your kids, if you have an older teenager, it's not super expensive to buy a spray tan machine. I mean, you can get them on Amazon and I watch one YouTuber say, get what, it doesn't really matter what kind you buy. Like yeah. there's, and there's no licensing with spray tanning. You, no. Anybody can do it. That's the anybody, thing. That anybody spray- can do it. Yeah. Yeah. 
and you just pop, I just popped up the tent, bought the solution, and and so <laughs> my college girls, that it's a college Bible study that I lead, they wanted to go on the mission field, and so um, I was like, well, let's do spray tans for missions, and sure enough. <laughs> let's do it every call it's a bake sale when you can do spray tans <laughs> oh no you froze are you there uh-oh oh angel frozen oh, oh you're not. back okay good okay we're frozen okay but anyways yeah we did spray tans for missions so that might be a, a side hustle for your kid there um, you go and i'm i'm like loving it these the teenage girls they want to come over and college girls and I shut the door and I step in the tent and I'm like, wear your bikini or go topless. I don't really care, whatever you're comfortable with. <laughs> like, you you might out. want to put a, a, a lock on the outside of that door coming yeah. out of oh, your yeah. house so that. Oh yeah. I, yeah. I've got like a, a I'm going to make a, uh, I'm going to make a sign spray tan in progress. Like yeah. don't come in. Like, don't come in. Do not disturb. Yeah. That's hilarious. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, couple other ideas that I had for my kids. Um, okay. So this is a true confession moment. I, I, Leslie Stewart have never, ever slept in a tent. Really? Really. Leslie, <laughs> girl, you need to come to South Carolina and I'll put you in a tent by the lake. I don't know that I can do it that I need to start at least in the backyard. So <laughs> I think I need to listen, John has tried. I, when we were early married, he was like, I'm going to get you to sleep in a tent. I just didn't grow up in a camping family. We, now yeah. I grew up in a family that we went to the mountains every summer and we, we stayed in a log cabin that was like very rustic yeah. and I love to fish and I can gut my own fish and I can put the That's worm good. on my hook. I can do all that stuff. It's not that I'm too girly that I can't sleep in a tent. I just never slept in a tent. Yeah. Even at Girl Scout camp, we slept in dormitories. Cabin. So yeah. I just have never slept in a tent. So we had a tent when we were only married. I did not make it the full night in the tent. I got too freaked out. So yeah, I have never slept in a tent. I'm 47 years old. So I decided, you know what? I think I need to try to sleep in a tent at least once in my life. And um, maybe try to either, we live on a golf course, so we have no backyard neighbors. <clears throat> this all sounded like a great idea up until about five days ago. And the reason it doesn't feel like such a good idea now is our, we have one of those ring cameras on the front door yeah. and John and I were out. Oh, I think this was last Saturday. So it was about a week ago. We were out with the kids and the, the ring notice went off. And so I checked it. Girl, we had a bobcat on our front porch. Are you serious? At like 4.30 in the afternoon. Yes, we have bobcats oh. in our, from okay. time to time in our neighborhood. Did, so did now you, I'm like, I don't really want to sleep in a tent. Did you see on the, speaking of that, with the, it was like a ring video camera where it captured a guy um, rescuing his wife from a bobcat? Yes. And then my oh. husband proceeded to tell me about that. <laughs> and he's like, this guy, his wife got attacked. And then he drugged the bobcat off and yes. he slung it around. Yes. I was like, nope. nope. So I'm just saying, okay. if I could be like hermetically sealed into the tent where there's no way anything could get in or you know get what? me, maybe I'll try it. But here's the other thing. Now I'm scared to death. Last night I went outside to water the plants on the front porch and I heard something in the front bushes and I actually <laughs> screamed in the front yard at eight o'clock last night, loud enough that Camden, oh. my youngest heard me. He came, he's like, mom, are you okay? I'm like, I think there's something in that bush. <laughs> Maybe then Leslie, you just need to push your furniture out of the living room and set up your tent in the living room. And that could be your first. I, that feels more my speed. So yes, yes. <laughs> set it up there. And then oh. you can, um, I will you know. say that my never having slept in a tent has actually worked out really well for me. Whenever you have to do those icebreaker games of like two truths and a lie, I always oh. throw in there. I've never slept in a tent and nobody ever thinks that's, that's the truth because well, I've never slept in a tent. So yeah. maybe I'll try to sleep in a tent this summer. We'll see. I think you should totally try that. And I know one thing that we have um, mentioned when we haven't been um, recording anything, but RV share. Yes. That, I would like to try that. I think that's really cool. Like they come in and they said, I know where we are, where we live in South Carolina, um, you can go on RV share and somebody will bring an actual RV or motor home to the campsite, set it up for you. All you have to do is show up and go enjoy that the campsite. Is and my then we, kind they come of camping. Up. Yes. Yeah. With an indoor toilet and running mm. water. That sounds perfect. Yes. Um, yes. Okay. A couple other quick ideas. 
minute to win it games have always oh, been yes. a big hit in my house. Yes. Um, one of my kids has a summer birthday and several years ago for his birthday, we did a minute to win it birthday party and it was an enormous hit. And so there That's are awesome. a million ideas out on Pinterest minute to win it games doesn't yeah. cost a lot of money and it's super fun. Um, that also is a great idea. If you have a family reunion or a group get together this summer, we did that last summer on the 4th of July with a bunch of friends. It was a hoot. Yes. I bought dollar store prizes for everybody. I, I, I am all about the, the fun and games. Um, yeah. I also thought this would be fun. I'm going to ask challenge my kids to each make a Spotify playlist for me because oh, my cool. kids, particularly Renner is really into music and okay. he always introduces me to great stuff I'd never heard of before. And so I want him to make That's me a playlist this summer so that I can listen to it and maybe, you know, find some new things I haven't heard before. So, um, and then my other idea is to do a food truck tour. Now, I don't know if where you are, if you have a lot of food trucks, but we have a lot of food trucks in Dallas and there's even areas of town where they go and several of them will set up in a parking lot. And so I had this idea of like, we could, that could get kind of expensive because food trucks can get pricey, but we could do like, you know, go do maybe like a one-time food truck tour yeah. or, try, or, or say, Hey, we're going to try one food truck a week or something right. like that. That could be a lot of fun too. So that's really cool. We have a, uh, every Thursday night, all the, all the, some, all summer long, we have what's called jazz on the alley. And oh, it's cool. like, we, cause we live in a real small town. And so they shut off like the downtown small town mm -hmm. area and all the food trucks come out. Oh, I love it. They have jazz music and they set up tables in the street and people dance in the street or they just sit around and people watch and go to all the food trucks. So we have a taco truck. That's amazing. I, Gosh, I I'm, I'm, I'm hoping more and more things like that happen over the next several months. I miss yeah. those kinds of just yeah, live just, music, getting together, right. all of those kinds of things. So, right. so yeah. Fun. Okay. So any other ideas from you that uh, you had or? Well, I know we're going to be playing some travel baseball too. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, that's going to be on my agenda is uh, traveling a little bit to the baseball field. And, but no, I want to, I want to continue over the summertime. I did kind of make a summer reading list. Oh, I know my kids, they don't want to read, but for myself, like some books and stuff like that, that I want to read. And I did for my college girls. I, I was like, would you guys be interested? And they actually were interested. So we're going to read through um, Andy Stanley's book, Better Decisions, Fewer Regrets. Oh, that's good. And he's got several YouTube videos um, on there. So I don't know. I'm not, I've, I'm going to be thinking more about it now that we've had this conversation conversation that like, what else do I want to do for the summer? But I want to keep simplifying and getting rid of stuff and getting organized and I don't know, putting it on the marketplace, putting on the marketplace. Yeah. Like <laughs> purge it. If it doesn't bring you joy, it's got to go. Thank you, Marie Kondo. Yes. All right, friends. Well, this has been an awesome episode of jumping in the pool, the page of our lives yet again. Right. So thanks for joining us. We will see you next time. We're pink. Who knows? We might as well. So see you guys soon. Have a great day, everybody. All right. Bye. Bye. Well, that closes the chapter on another episode of the Page of Our Lives podcast. Make sure and head over to Facebook and Instagram where you can find us at Page of Our Lives podcast. That's P-A-G-E of Our Lives podcast. We also have the video version of our podcast available on YouTube. Wherever you find us, that's where you're going to find our show notes and links to anything we mentioned in today's episode. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next week.